Mr. Madam Speaker. Last week, at the agenda time, the Honorable Deputy Prime Minister informed the House that Corps Chaplon will be part of Phase 2. Do I understand that the inhabitants of Corps Chaplon will be connected between that period, 10th of September to 9th of January? They will be, uh, they will be connected under Phase 2. Corps Chaplon falls within the geographical area of Phase 2. Next B764. Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, I'm informed by the MIE that following the advertisement for the post of lecturer at the MIE in December 2017, a selection exercise was carried out. Ms. PC was offered appointment as lecturer Order, please. thereat on no 20th April 2018. The qualification requirement for the post of lecturer, as per the scheme of service, is as follows. Two A-levels, a relevant degree from a recognized institution, a minimum of two years relevant post-qualification experience, or a postgraduate qualification normally obtained after one year of full-time study. As regards part B of the question, I am further informed that Ms. P.C. holds the following qualification in line with the scheme of service a high school certificate, a Bachelor of Arts in Economics, an MA Economics, a postgraduate diploma in Educational Administration. She also worked as educator in the private secondary school. And as for Part C of the question, she has been offered appointment as lecturer as for the terms and conditions of the PRB. She was on probation for a period of one year, and subsequently she was confirmed to the post of lecturer following satisfactory service. The Honourable Minister has chosen only a bit. What suit her with regard to the qualification required has quoted you. I don't With want to question, say that you are misleading the arms, but probably you have been misled by, by the MIE. I will I will One of the main conditions to be appointed as lecturer of the MIE <laughs> is the candidates, uh, is that the priority will be given to candidates with higher appropriate pedagogical qualification. And this lady does not have any pedagogical qualification. She has one. Wait, 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 let him finish. She has a PG diploma in educational administration and has never worked in a tertiary education institution. She has a residency or a pedagogy. She has been teaching economics to grade 10, grade 30. We're providing information. Uh, no, but, 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 Honorable Minister, I just to believe that she's qualified. I must say that she is not qualified for the post. She has been working at a Perian College for nine months. Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, I'm going to table the scheme of service for lecturer, and you will note that in the scheme of service, they mention that in addition, a minimum of two years of relevant post-qualification experience or a postgraduate qualification normally obtained after one year of full-time study. A postgraduate qualification. Teaching, Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, is part of pedagogical experience. So, Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, I table the scheme of service for the... Uh, can I ask the Honourable uh, Honourable Minister, how is it that this lady, when she was appointed, she was given five increments? I have the letter of appointment, why have you when in fact teachers who are teaching, their lecturers who are teaching there, with more than five or six years experience, are earning less than what she's earning today. Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, I'm not Deputy aware Deputy of Deputy the increments Deputy being given. Deputy Mr. Deputy Speaker, Deputy sir, Deputy I haven't finished. Oh, sorry. No, I haven't I, finished. I, I'm sorry, I haven't finished. Okay. Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, whatever the conditions of employment that the MIE has adopted, is based on PRB <coughs> recommendations. Nothing more, nothing less. She was being appointed. On the day of appointment, she has been given five increments, which means she's earning now more than people who have been teaching at the MI for more than six years. I table that five increments at the, at the, at the uh, once appointed. Now, this lady, apart from that lady, there were people with PhD degrees applied. PhD from the University of Mauritius. Will the Honorable Minister be surprised to learn that and there's a signature of Mr. Varma, 
the director writing to the EOC, he stated the following. Listen to that. Am I going to, to teach secondary school? Uh, uh, Chaudhary will, will, be, will, uh, will award degree university very soon. This is what they say when comparing with the education. The MIE is a higher institution for teacher, teacher training. The courses offered by the University of Mauritius does not match our needs and requirements. So is the MIE today telling the people, telling the nation that the degree earned by students from the University of Mauritius does not meet the MIE requirement level? I table a letter which was produced and signed by Mr. Doctor. I don't know whether he has any doctor in Mauritius or in Vorma. No, two letters. Yes, I've already tabled no, both of them. No. So, that is the horrible person agreeable to the contents of the letter of Mr. Vorma that the uh, uh, University of Mauritius degrees does not meet the requirement of MI? Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, I, do, I cannot comment on the opinion of Mr. Vorma to start with. And secondly, talking about the requirements, etc., of that particular person and referring to the letter uh, by some other applicant having a PhD, I'd like to remind the Honourable Member that there is a case at the Supreme Court and this is why I did not comment on this particular part. If there is a case on the Supreme Court on that particular appointment, I wonder whether it is proper to have a discussion in it at the level of the Assembly. Next question. Okay, last question. Last question. This lady, uh, according to the scheme and duties and credentials of staff of the Church of the MI, they should have <coughs> pedagogical, she does not have. She has no experience in the use of ICT in performing her duties. She has never confirmed in a substantive capacity, never been confirmed in a substantive capacity. Only nine months experience at April yes. College. And the past performance re related to other cognitive duties cannot be assessed. So she does not even need the basic requirement of, the, of being a lecturer. And she has been appointed lecturer over the head of top qualified personnel. And she's earning more than those who are lecturing for the last seven months. And is that not what is her cut? Okay, Mr. Mr. Speaker, sir, I refer the Honourable Member to the statement I made in Parliament last week. I've got nothing to do with appointment, and there's no point of him say, saying that she was uh, favoured or not, because her selection was carried out by the Appointment Committee, and if ever there is any mal done, obviously I'm going to query their mind. And anyway, Stating if anyone gets appointed by an institution, coming in Parliament and stating that it is because he or she is related to so and so, and let me say that I don't even know the person, that person has been appointed by the MI, and I think it is very unfair to come and to talk about a person who is not in Parliament and to make all sorts of allegations on that particular person. I trust the MI has done its recruitment in the proper way. In, if ever there is any mal done, I am going to take them to task. I have not any allegation. I have come with facts and figures and documentary evidence yeah. and to substantiate my, my, my question. Next question, Honorable Balamudi. B765. I've said next. B765. Okay, on a point of order, please. Uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, the, uh, the Honorable Member just mentioned that this lady was appointed and was given five increments on the day of her appointment. Is it appointment, a point of order? Or a, point a point of, of explanation, a point of clarification. And he, he mentioned that in the letter, that lady was given five increments. So I'd like, I've just seen the letter. Nowhere in that letter is such a mention made, Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir. I would send this letter back to the table. Next question, Honorable Balamudi. I, I, I made a point uh, on that letter, it is written. I'll, I'll have a copy. That's why, that's why. Let, let me quote from that letter. Let me quote from that letter. Your salary will be at the rate of 35 million This is not acceptable. It's a salary scale. It's a salary scale. We could not. 
Are we going to get into an argument on a document that was tabled in the House? That's why I say let's move on to the next question, please. Next question, Honorable Balamudi. Yes. B765. Mr. Order, please. Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir. I am informed. I am informed that works for phase one of the Metro Express project from Rosier to Port Louis is progressing well and is around 85% completed. This phase is due to be in operation as from September 2019. During the construction works, the design and build contractor Larson and Tubro Limited, along with the stakeholders such as Metro Express Limited, the Road Development Authority, the police and local authorities are carrying out regular inspections to ensure that existing assets, including roads, drains, footpaths, located within the site are being maintained to the required standards. For a fully integrated transport system, it is of prime importance for the light rail stations to be easily accessible to users. The public may access the LRT stations through the following modes, walking, cycling, buses, taxis, and private vehicles. Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, I'm informed that in order to have in place a fully integrated multimodal transport system, com commuter facilities like footpaths, cycling racks, bus stops, taxi stands, park and ride and drop off pick off bays will be provided at the LRT stations. And these are included in the transport integration plan which has been devised by the Larson and Tubro in collaboration with Metro Express Limited, the TMRSU, the RDA and the police. Overall, the design of the project integrates into the existing environment to provide high quality urban and landscape design measures. As the Deputy Speaker says, as regards the rehabilitation of the roads, drains, and footpaths, and the upgrading of the environment in Richelieu, Caen Chaplon, and La Butte, the following are being envisaged by Lausanne and Tubrook. Cleaning of Richelieu, Branch Road, and amenities. Integration of the Saint Louis station near Chaplon to the existing internal streets such as Volsi and Arayeru streets through footpaths and drains. And the cleaning of Monseigneur Lynn, street and amenities. But as I said, Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, that we are landscaping the whole alignment from Rosil to Port Louis. They so I did not hear anything, by the Honorable mention anything about the surrounding of the football pitch, which is now uh, where there have been quite a lot of work around there. So will the football pitch and its surrounding be included in the embellishment? Well, I don't have it here, but I'm noting it and it will be reinstated because whatever be the equipment which is being affected by the works of the metro will have to be reinstated even if it is shouldn't be in a better condition when they give it back to us. Because to the drains, especially at Rishi, which is causing quite a lot of inconvenience when I have drains. With the drain we look into, we look, you look into the Mr. drain Mr. as well? Speaker, sir, they will be looked into. B seven six six. Six six. Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, <coughs> under Section three three of the Reform Institution Act, the Commissioner of Prisons is empowered to make standing orders and give administrative directions to prison officers. In this respect. The prison standing order number 26 on medical care and sick leave issued in January 2018 governs the procedures to be followed when prison officers absent themselves on ground of illness. With your permission, Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, I am tabling a copy of the standing order number 26 Paragraph 2C of the Standing Order specifically stipulates that when prison officers are unable to attend duty on grounds of illness on Saturdays and Sundays, their absence should be covered by a government medical certificate. Medical certificates from private medical practitioners for 
these specific days are not accepted. But, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, the prison provides an essential service and protects the society from crime by keeping lower breakers in custody for the duration of their sentences. By nature of their duties, prison officers are required to work on shift covering a 24-hour period, including Sundays and public holidays. Officially declared cyclone days and during emergencies. I'm informed by the Commission of Prisons that it had been a practice in the past for prison officers to absent themselves on weekends and submit medical certificates from private medical practitioners, thus undermining the security of the prison when they are not working. In order to put an end to that bad practice, in, septem in September 2005, the then Commissioner of Prisons, Mr. W. S. Duff, amended the standing order, <coughs> number 26, and added a new paragraph requiring that all sick leaves of weekends must be authorized by a government medical officer and medical certificates from private doctors shall not be accepted. I'm further informed that the amendment has proven to be worthwhile and a drop in sick leave during weekends was, uh, 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 a, a drop was observed. However, it was up to the expected level as prison officers started circumventing that amendment by absenting themselves from duty for two or more days starting from Friday and submitting medical certificates which were issued by private medical practitioners and which had to be accepted by the prison medical officer. Sir, so in January 2018, the Commissioner of Prisons set up a committee under the chairmanship of a deputy commissioner and comprising officers in charge of the penal institutions, duty <laughs> roster officers, the medical section, and the human resource management section to look into the cause of superfluous sick leaves <laughs> taken by prison staff during weekends. The issue of medical certificates from private medical practitioners covering absence of prison staff on Fridays and weekends came back on the table. The Strategic Management Committee, chaired by the Commission of Prisons, decided to include Friday as a day on which staff would have to submit medical certificate from government medical officers to cover their absence. The standing order number 26 was amended accordingly. The House may wish to note that presently sick leaves on weekends in prisons, uh, including Fridays, have been reduced considerably. Coming to the, the Mauritius Research and Innovation Council, I, may I ask the Honourable Minister what action are being taken? Because in the recent publication of the Global Index, the World Intellectual Property, last year we were 75th, this year we were 40. So we are going, we are doing from bad to worse. In 2014 we were 40. 2017, or this really Yeah, but it's the council. We are talking about the council. It's good that, that he came in with the question. Actually, last time, when the... I, I forgot who asked the question, and I... It was during the budget debate. I gave a full explanation how the calculation is made. And one part of it is redundancy, when people lose jobs. Unfortunately, falls under the innovation index. And this is why we had... Uh, discussion with the organizations and they said that next year they are going to rectify the matter. 